just look good. I'm just doing like a detailed view. Like you look good. I'm That's looking at everything. Cute. No, you don't. Yeah. I look good though. Yeah. Okay. Blow loose. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I love the hair. I'm over here giving Thank perm, you. the relaxed thing. You over there giving natural. Oh, natural vibes. Mm-hmm. It's summertime. You know, these wigs, I don't have time for it. The glue, the yeah. edges, having to wig. wrap it every single night. Like, once I'm tired, I want to hop in the bed and go to sleep. That's why I don't glue down my wig. <laughs> Everything is a closure wig. Take it off, put it on, just like a bra. Yep. Not just like a bra. It. Just like a bra. I need to be able to have access to take it off my head when I want it. <laughs> Like, I don't like it. But, hey, everybody. It's McGree, the co-host of The Fang Podcast. And here is my lovely, my natural, my cousin, Dami. I'm sorry, Rebecca. Yes, Rebecca. <laughs> I mean, Dami Lola is fine as well, but yes. y'all know me as Rebecca. Um, and thank you for tuning in with us on this episode of The Fang Podcast. Um, If you didn't know... It stands for First American Nigerian Generation. Yes. Okay. We are First American Nigerian. Wait. We are First Generation American Nigerian. Born in America, grew up with Nigerian parents, grew up in a Nigerian household. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's nice to have you guys here with us today. Um, we have some interesting topics and we have a surprise for you guys too. <laughs> Surprise. Who doesn't love surprises? I do. <laughs> um, but before we get into the show, we just do want to um, bring it to your attention that we are supporting the CNS Angels with their annual school supply donation or charity, whichever one, however you'll say it. Um, in, the, in the comment, in the bio... Right? In, in the, the description. description. Yeah, in the I'm description. Here, I'm just different platforms. In the <laughs> descriptions, there will be a link that will go to their website where you can make a donation. It requires your card, I believe. And those donations, the whatever you donate will be used to buy supplies to send to two schools, one here in America and another one in Nigeria. Um, click the link, there's more information there. Um, yes, reading is fundamental, okay, guys? Yes, Everything it is. will be in the description box, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just wanted to... So lately, I've been watching this show, right? It's called... I think it's called How to Build a Sex Room. Mm. And I am in love with that show. I need to watch it. From the beginning to the end, because it makes me so happy to see this. I think her name is Melissa or Melanie. I really need to start remembering these things. Mm -hmm. But um, she she's this, um, let's say, European. I think I do believe she's British, but she's a European lady who designs sex rooms. And... You know, usually when people think about sex rooms, it's the dungeon, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. And then what she does is give me glitz and glamour, okay? Lipstick on your teeth. Alrighty. Yes, ma'am. Either way, she gives me glitz and glamour. But what I like is that she kind of, she sh on her show, is different couples, different forms of relationships. <clears throat> and then all these people also have different tastes for, you know, their sexual desires. So I just like how she takes what she learns from them and then puts it in this room, in their room so they can enjoy themselves, but also discover new things. So basically she's designing a room for them to do, you know, whatever sexual things that they want to do. Yeah. Based on their interests. Is it yeah. their bedroom or is it like a... They choose specific. the space. They okay. choose the space. Some people do their bedroom. Some people do their basement. Some people have done secret rooms mm -hmm. in their house. It's just oh, really, that's yeah. That's how you keep the spice alive, a secret room in exactly. the house? Exactly. But what I liked most was just like really learning, seeing that, you know, there's different kind of kinks that people are into, and it's okay not to be into one and be into the other. Mm -hmm. And it kind of made me really sit there and think like, yo, Mercury, what you like? <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I like this. Ooh, I want this. Ooh, I need this. I'm already thinking about what furniture I want in my house. Because <laughs> it was just like, you, you know, I don't think, at least in our upbringing, you know, we don't talk about sex about it, talk about sex like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, mm, in a way, 
I'm open to talking about sex. I am comfortable with talking about sex. So it was just like, okay, I kind of see how you can incorporate it in your home. Yeah, I feel like definitely now it makes it more comfortable to talk about sex because we're more educated now. And yeah. It's normal. Like back yeah. then, it didn't seem normal because like we wasn't doing it, and like it, like you said, it wasn't talked about. But now it's normal. Like, right. so what? You have sex, me too. Okay, that's great. You know what made me laugh? There was um an episode with a African American couple. I don't know like if they were just if they were American or not, but African American couple, right? And it just kind of made me laugh um, because the man or the husband. He was just like, not with the shits. I'm like, ugh, black men. They they just do the basics. I'm like, ugh, so boring. But, you know, that's from my, ex I'm only speaking from my experiences yeah. and what I see there. Mm -hmm. So it was like, hmm, do black men really go further to, you know, explore kinks and Hey, you fetish? never know. I know, right? I don't. I'm not in that world. So... <laughs> but yeah, no, I like that show. I really, I don't know. I'm going to tell y'all, watch it. It would kind of make you want to think like, hmm, is this what I like? Hmm, is that what I like? Yeah, I've been seeing it on Netflix. I do this thing with Netflix. Like, when they have a new show they're promoting, yeah. I'm not going to watch it because, like, you know, everyone is watching it and, like, I just don't want to watch it. Maybe, like, a couple of months I'll watch it. Because right now I'm in the middle. I just started watching All American Homecoming because I finished All American, the regular show. So I'm really into that. But How to Build a Sex Room, I'm going to watch it definitely. A couple of months. Yeah, a couple months. About a couple weeks. Because I watch stuff on different things. I have Hulu. I have all these other things that I'm watching different shows on. And I don't like to start a new show while I'm in the middle of another show. But I want to talk to you about it. So why, by the time you watch it, how I'm many episodes? Oh no, I just started watching it. You know, <laughs> I don't even know if there's like seasons to it. So I'm sorry, but not a couple months. Yeah, I dragged it. Not a couple. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna watch it soon. I'm about to say that's <laughs> dragging it. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been into. Any shows you've been into? I just started watching All American Homecoming. Uh, I'm also watching Insecure for the first time. I'm on episode. Really, <laughs> Olivia Pope? You Olivia just... Pope? Wait, wrong person. Wrong person. <laughs> 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 That's scandal, baby. <laughs> Issa Rae, who you thinking about? <laughs> you just started watching that. Yeah. From season one. Yep. I never watched it. I'm on season. Fucking I'm on crazy. season two. Wait, insecure, insecure. Who's Damn. the? Who wrote it? What's Issa going on? Ray. What is going? Oh on? yes, I did watch that. Damn, Dami, you late. Damn, how I got that wrong? I don't, I don't know. know how you got that wrong. You ain't gonna lie. I've been. Every, and she said this the other day too. And my first thought was Olivia Pope. Mm. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I need to take like some vitamins or some shit because my memory is all fucked up. Mm -mm. But yeah. Insecure. That's really all I'm watching. Those two shows is what I'm watching right now. What about Atlanta? Huh? Atlanta? Atlanta? Have you ever seen Atlanta? No. no. With Donald Glover? No. Is it a movie or a TV show? TV. It's on Hulu? Netflix? It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu? You can get with Yo, that. Yo, you got a Hulu? I do got a Hulu. Did I have the password? Yeah. Atlanta, right? You got to get with that. Insecure in Atlanta, like the best shit on TV. Really? I know, I finished and it. And I fucked with Insecure. I was like, oh, what have I been missing out on this show? Good. Yeah. I was crying. Wait, Insecure? Yeah. You know, Tay told me happen. the same thing. She was like, as I watched the show towards the end, she cried during the last episode. Yeah. She was like, you might cry. I was like, oh, the last time I cried was The Vampire Diaries when it ended. I never watched that one. You need to watch it. That's a great, that's my favorite. That's my whole high school right there. The Vampire Diaries? I can't stand it. Stefan and Damon and Alina. Their, their relationship was toxic. I got tired of it. That's why I stopped watching it. Yeah, it's a whole lot of shit. It's too much. It's too toxic But for me. even though she left the show, it still had, like, you know, a good storyline. It was still, you know, captivating. Someone left the show? Yeah. Mad people left, but that's neither here nor there. Damn. I didn't stay long enough to watch it. But either way, um... That was interesting. We have some TV shows to watch. Um, we do have a surprise for you. We have someone that you're going to see for the very first time. You've heard his voice many times before, but now you get to see his lovely face. Oh, the comic. Introducing Wolf Taylor. Is it Taylor? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I be forgetting, so I don't ever. I have to correct myself like every two seconds. Okay. But I always thought it was Wolf Taylor, but you know. I can't believe you just started watching Insecure. That's wild. Yeah. That's like really crazy. Where I started you? two days ago. Wait. I'm up to the part, season two. What happened last? What happened last? What happened last? Damn, I forgot. But I'm on season two, the beginning. Oh, okay. So you you're getting there. You're moving. You're moving pretty fast. Oh, I'm getting 
Oh, I'm up to the part where it's Derek's birthday dinner, I think. And I did. No, it's like five seasons of the show. So Issa's friend, the one that's married. The one that's married. Yeah. He wears glasses. He's light skinned. That's her friend. I don't know, but you sure that was her friend? That's not her ex. Oh wait, no, no, that's not her ex. No, her ex is I forgot his name. He's the other guy. He's a bum. I'm gonna tell the point oh, where it's yeah, his yeah, birthday. He's dinner. married. He's married. At the birthday yeah, dinner, and he Seals. brings his coworker to the dinner, not knowing it's like a birthday dinner, not a birthday party. Right, right, right. That's where I'm at. Oh, oh that, yeah. gets, that gets juicy over there. Lawrence brought his girlfriend too, or something. His date. Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. It's Issa's uh, boyfriend. Yeah, that, he that bought his coworker, up. the girl from his job that he's been seeing. That show, man. Fucking, I might run that bitch back tonight. <laughs> I know, right? It's so yeah. a good show. Um. But yeah, thank you, Wolf, for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. We always love having you. Now we get they get to see you. Yeah. All the little commentary, the ad libs you guys hear in the back, that's him. <laughs> me goes. <laughs> um, but Dami, I'll let you take it. Uh so yeah, we have a question for you, Wolf. Okay. Um, you don't have to answer it now, but you know, you could just think on it. Okay. Who is Wolf? Wolf is No, 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 no. don't answer it. Oh, you... don't answer it now. I'm gonna give you time to think on it. And we're going to get back to you on it. Okay, cool. I like that. All right, cool. That was, yeah, so you could think about it. Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> See, I was ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that, to too. I, I like that. Because if someone asked me, I'd have been like, um, mm. give me a second. Yeah, let me think yeah. on that real quick. Yeah. Right? So that's what we're talking about today. We're on okay. the topic of identity. Who, yeah. Who you who are. are. And I like that. finding it. I like that. That's perfect. Yes, so, um, Dami, you want to start or I got to start? I'll start. All right, so who am I? That's a hard question to answer for me, at least, because I feel like I just started trying to figure out who I am. Mm. Um, I feel like with college, I kind of, I it's like something snapped, like reality checked in and I realized, okay, it's not just me in this world. I have to fight for myself, but I also have to be aware of what's around me. Most importantly, be aware of my surroundings and that life is happening, not without me, not always with me, but, you know, it's still constantly happening. So when I ask mm. myself, who am I? That's interesting. I don't know. I'm still growing, you know, you when change. Did, when did that shift happen? College. College? I want to say maybe... What age is this? 19? 19. 18? I was about to say like maybe 18, 18 19, 19 or something. That's interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, growing up an only child, I just... I was always sheltered, so it was just me and my own world, going to school, come back home. Whatever happens is always at home in my neighborhood, you know, my my family and my community. So just trying to figure out who I am outside of that and being able to express that to other people, because mm-hmm. that's another challenge in and of itself. Who is Rebecca? Who is Wolf? Who is Mookamat? Like, how can you properly tell someone who you are? Right. Yeah. You know, it's, um, if somebody was to ask me that- Lipstick. Again, <laughs> beef. No love. every time, but uh, I was trying to say, like, if some every time somebody asks me that, I could actually, go, I would first, the first thing I would describe is the person I knew before, which was who I was like in middle school, high school. Mm. I can describe that person from beginning to end, but if I was to like really think about right now, I don't know. It's a different person, it's a completely different person. In, hmm. In middle school, high school, um, I did get along with a lot of people, but I also got into a lot of altercations with a lot of people. I was the fighter. I was the fighter in the family. Mm-hmm. Like people call Mukri if there was, was a ready. problem. <laughs> like th- don't get Mukri mad. Like it's cause and it was a scary sight. Mm. Like even I when I think about that person, I'm I'm scared of that person. Mm. Like that person was just mad. Mm. And I took it out on a lot of people, not even realizing like, oh, okay, what am I so mad about that? I let things that people say and do to me mm. make me put the, my hands on them. Yeah, that's a good question. And when I tell people about that person, they they their response is always, I can't I can't believe that would be you. Like I could I can't mm-hmm. see that that I, you're I not like it. that. I can believe it. And it makes me it gets me confused because I'm like, but that person was real. Yeah, like I know that, that person. I know that person the best, mm-hmm. but then I know who I am now. So mm-hmm. it's like, 
when people say that response to me, I'm like, so y'all don't believe me? <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all think like I'm soft? Yeah. No. But that wasn't who you were, though. That was just something you were doing. No, I would say that's who I was. You think so? Yeah, I would say that's who I was. Because it was something that I sleep, breathe, eat. It's fighting? Mm-hmm. Like, I used to wake up knowing, like, yeah, I'm going to get in a fight today. Like, it was mm-hmm. so instilled in my head. And I don't, I start like, as I got, like, into college, I started realizing, I'm like, hmm, maybe it was a survival tactic. Mm. You know, because I was going through a lot of stuff in my home. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, maybe that was just my way of surviving. Mm-hmm. And so I have an idea of who I was in college. But now after college with the podcast and everything, I'm like, okay, who is this muc- new McCree? Who is she trying to be? And I'm trying to be that person and stand in there. Because when I was in college, especially when I was in a relationship, I knew who I was. But for the sake of pleasing a partner, I kind of... Let's just say went against it apart. Yeah, I felt like I was drifting apart from who I was, mm-hmm. like trying to be this holy, holy person. I am Ooh, not holy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how old, how old were you at this time? Um, which time? Like um, being in college. Like were you also like nineteen, eighteen? This is yeah. when you start to develop out of the anger. I, I'm guessing is what you're saying. Maybe at nineteen, because. Freshman year of college, I was definitely very aggressive. I was not saying mm-hmm. very aggressive, but my first freshman year of college, I was spicy. Mm-hmm. Like the first part, the first college party, mm-hmm. I will not forget. I, I told the story before in this thing. I got drank Nutcracker and I started repping gangs, talking to the police. That was my first college party, my freshman year. And I've had like, you know, altercations that could have happened, but you know, some people don't be about it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But the freshman year, yeah, no. So I'll say probably sophomore year is when it started to like, okay, I don't want to be like yeah. this no more. I want to calm down. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No. You have lipstick on your teeth. Again? Yeah. Um, That's interesting because like I feel like who I am as a person now um is really not different who I ever was, to be honest with you. Like I feel like my spirit has always been the temperament that it is. I've always been a calm person, a person who is a thinker. You know what I mean? Because that's Mm -hmm. how my father is. So just by natural extension of him, I'm the exact same way. So I've only gotten older and mature and gained more experiences, but I I haven't changed though. I couldn't couldn't even say that I've changed. I've just developed more into what was already there. Yeah, developed is a good word to use. Yeah, because this person is, it's not like, it's the same guy. It really is. Like me, my the ten year old version of me is the twenty nine year old version of me today. Like through and through, except obviously the life differences and the experience and the wisdom. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to hear y'all's um, like you saying like, oh, it dawned on me like, oh, like it's not just my perspective. You know what I mean? And then it dawned on you like, man, like I was so angry. Like and why? And then now it's like you're more, you know. I'm like, jolly go lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would definitely say that because <clears throat> we always had a good relationship, obviously. You know, we grew up together, but I feel like now we're like best friends. You are my best friend. We Get out of here. We, I, I did not feel like that about you when we were younger. Like, I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel like that about you either because, yo, I'm talking my shit. Every time there would be an event where she would invite her friends from school or whatever, mm-hmm. she would ignore me. Yeah. Because it was about, it was about school me. friends. That's how it was as a shorty, though. That's how it was. That's how it was. Like, you family and shit. You're not cool enough. Yo. I'm not cool enough, obviously. That's what it was, right? That's what it was. I know it. I don't... She <laughs> never thought I was cool enough. You That's know how... She used to bully me, yo. I believe it. Me? I'm not going to lie. You remember... Yo, okay, I'm going to share this. Th- I'm going to share this story, <laughs> even though it really... I don't know how you feel about it, but embarrassment is a choice. Okay. <laughs> You know, I told you, I was very angry and I was always fighting, right? Yeah. Imagine me and her fighting in front of the TV, in front of Grandpa. You remember that? Oh, gosh. Grandpa we told Ian them about this. We did? We told them about this. Oh, my God. No, we're going to go back to it. Either way, somebody's watching it. That's new. <laughs> Grandpa was over here watching, eating his oranges, watching, I think, was it? Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer or what is that other guy's name? Maury. Or Maury, yeah. Mm-hmm. And me and her fighting in front of the TV and I just like cracked her shit. Like her whole tooth, and I front to you her whole tooth. Cry. Like, where yeah. did that strength Gone. come from? So I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I feel like, like you I, cracked her tooth. I cracked her tooth. You want to get her lick? You want to get your lick back? 
Yeah, but damn, if she get her look back, then somebody else gonna get their look back because I definitely cracked another tooth in my life. <laughs> damn, <laughs> you need to pay somebody's dental bill out here for <laughs> real. No, you have insurance. Mokri for health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but let's, I don't know why I did that to y'all. Yeah, I don't know either. And even when I went to college, I really neglected y'all. Have you ever been to therapy? No, I think I need it. You do? No, excessively. I know I need it. Mm-hmm. But... Because it's not, it's not normal to be so angry as a child. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly, at one point in my life, I think they were, um, the teachers were telling, like, this is when I was, like, younger, younger. Like, I mean, like, I don't have the memory, but I've been told the story. Mm. And it was, like, I guess I had bit somebody's child in, Man, um... That's wild. Yeah, like, kindergarten or pre-K or something in my early stages of life. Mm-hmm. And they, basically, the school made my parents take me to a uh, psychiatric mm. to get me evaluated. Mm. And you know, um, what ended up happening, I say like God was on my side. Cause you know that you have to be very careful with um, taking people into psychiatric wards and stuff because Absolutely. once it's on their record, it kind of um, could mess up things in their life. Yeah, it's not a good look. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, but obviously I, it was horrible that they told them to take me there. And yeah. in my favor, the psychiatrist was saying like, there's nothing wrong with her. She yeah. just mm-hmm. this. Yeah. But honestly, I really think I had problems. Like, mm-hmm. I would be very, I honestly think I had problems. Like, I had a temperament problem. Yeah. Like, even now I try, like, I've learned to calm down. But if, if you get me on the right day, you'll get the wrong person. Yeah. Nah, I feel you. A lot of people, a lot of people feel that way. That's that's very common in, um, I would say, African descended people. You know what I mean? Like we're very quick to Angry. get on the rah rah shit. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's it, Might you even say it's cultural? I think so because when it comes to like um, when I think about um, discipline, mm-hmm. I always try like with my siblings at least like at least specifically one of them but with my siblings i'll be trying not to put my hands on her <laughs> <laughs> i be trying but be, but it's always like the initial response yeah so i don't see it's a different world for men and women it's a different world you know what I mean? because like men don't have the luxury to to do these things you know what i mean like i men can't just put their hands on people and they can't try to this try to get it together. You know what I mean? You kind of have to have it together already. Like, but if I'm at a, if I'm ever at a place where I'm putting my hands on somebody, it's bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's like all other options have completely been tried and it don't work. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because you never want to go and put your hands on someone, but it's like, yeah, like that's if, what it came to. Then, yeah, there's a reason. Like, if I put my hands on somebody, it is like life and death, truly. It can't be anything less than that. Like, oh, we had a misunderstanding. Like, I wasn't fucking with your vibe. It, it can't be that. It'll be like, my I'm I'm in danger. And I have to do everything possible to protect myself. That's the way it has to be. But like, as a woman, though, it's like, think about like TV and like all these things where women like are always defending themselves. But it, it doesn't have to be life and death necessarily. It's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not feeling the little... vibe. You disrespected mm-hmm. me. You know what I mean? And I now I'm about to fight you. beat somebody up for laughing. Right. I told you to laugh. That joke wasn't funny. You it's know, not funny. <laughs> it's not meant to be funny to you. Why are you laughing? That's exactly yeah. what happened. <laughs> yeah. It's just a diff- it's a different concept for sure. That's crazy. I never thought yeah. of that for men. It's like not a with women. It's not a death concept. It's just like oh, we're fighting like for whatever reason, like defending my honor or whatever. But for men, it's like nah, we one of us might not go home tonight. Like real talk, it's really like that. I heard a story um, about men and how like you know like at a party, you no know, drinking, having fun or whatever. Yep. And just, you know, having that liquor in them, not being able to, maybe they're not used to controlling their emotions. They might mm-hmm. have anger. They just don't know how to yeah, release it Yeah, liquor be doing shit. And, you know, someone step on your shoe. Why are you stepping on my shoe? Yeah. And that's how the fights start out. Yeah. When we went to the Lotto concert, there was like three different fights that broke out. And it was Within all- strangers. Not the Lotto concert. Yeah. yeah. And he was confused. Like, y'all don't even know each other. Why y'all fighting? Not the yeah. Lotto concert. The Lotto Damn. concert. It was like- I was having a good time. Within a matter of right. 10 minutes, three fights broke out. We was like, what's going on? Like, yeah, we're trying crazy. to enjoy the show. Yeah, like, that's crazy. This is not what we came here to do. Hey, people be going through shit though, man. You never know. Right. I, you know what it is? That, I think what- planned or influenced a lot of my anger is that people didn't know what I was going through mm-hmm. and they teased me for it. 
right? Yeah. So I'm going to be very open with y'all. I have like, I don't have a thyroid. <clears throat> and you need to have a thyroid in order to survive because that produces your growth hormones. Mm. So from probably age six to age 13, not age 13, maybe 13, maybe 10, maybe six to 10. Mm. No one, we didn't know anything was wrong with me. I just looked skinny. Mm. Like, I mean, like, no, like people that suffer from anorexia. Anorexia, yeah. Almost like that, but not anorexia. I, cause I eat, but my thyroid was made, it was hyper, I believe. So it was burning everything that I ate immediately. So it, like, and that reflected on how I look. Like, if I find a picture, you would see, like, I was mad, skinny, no, no, no life in my cheeks. I look like a twig. And, you know, you go to school, you know, these kids, kids is. Of course. They're yeah. evil. They'll hurt, find your ass up. <laughs> exactly. And, like and then it's like, it didn't help. I was, Af I was Nigerian. Right. It didn't help. I had a big forehead. You know, right. big forehead was not in All them. the things that they just need. They don't need it. No more reasons than that. Exactly. And then after I had a, I had, I still had an ass though. So then you had, the rumors so it was crazy yeah it was crazy so a lot of people didn't know I was going through that I didn't really talk about it plus other shit but that because it affected my appearance I really felt like I had to fight for my dignity uh you know what I I understand that I really do because you know unfortunately like I remember when I was like in elementary school or whatever like that this we was having jokes for African people we was having jokes, you know what I mean? So just just imagine like people saying these like really insensitive things and it's like you fucking with the wrong one. You got the right one today, as a yep. matter of fact. So Oh my god, so the, the right voodoo, one. The voodoo jokes used to kill me. I think there was one time I got so mad, it was like in front of E Hall, I took off my shoes. Not E Hall. Yeah, I went to E Hall. <laughs> you know about E Hall, right? I went to E Hall. No, what is E Hall? You know, like high schools have like different halls categorized by yeah. alphabet. That's stuff. the name of her school, E Hall. It's called E Hall. Yeah, yeah it's a goddamn prison. What the fuck? And you, okay. and that, that's what, like, e you gotta. We had to get go through security with the freaking the metal, airport metal shit. detectors and shit. Yep, you that's get wild. pat down in New York. Yeah, in Brooklyn. What? In Brooklyn. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, my whole life wasn't flat. So we didn't have metal detectors in schools in Texas. We never had stuff like that. I guess it wasn't that level of crime either, though. So. I don't know, New York is like a fucking comic book back in the day, so it's yeah, like... Yeah, no, I think it's still like that to this day, though. Well, I technically yeah. never really experienced high school in Brooklyn, because I went to high school in the city, mm -hmm. and I went to an all-girls school, so mm. all her experiences, Different I can't feel. relate. Yeah. All my friends, whenever they talk about high school, I'm like, I can't relate. I was in school with bitches. I don't know. <laughs> my shit was ghetto. <laughs> I went to... I like. I don't mind sharing where I went. I went to PS92 on Parkside. Even the name? What the fuck? It's like a gun, PS92. <laughs> Like a fucking robot. Yeah, and PS92 <laughs> was next to MS2, so there was always mix and everything, middle school, elementary school, so there was always mix and drama be and mm -hmm. stuff happening there. No, that's and wild. then I went to daycare at Cycle, and Cycle was on Church Ave, and across from Cycle is E Hall. So I went daycare yeah. on one street, yeah. go a couple blocks, elementary, come back to Church Avenue, I go to Erasmus for middle school and high school. Mm. Like I spent my whole life in Flatbush. And then she flew to Buffalo. I, so I you grew know. up in New York. Yeah, that's my life. That's a huge. That's probably a huge reason why you had that level of aggression. Because, be, again, being from Texas, I just everything is new. Everything, the style, the slang, how kids act, how they everything, and like I do notice that like niggas just be like real hype out here. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I like quick to anger. They just be hype. <laughs> You gotta stay ready because you literally never know. You so, really yeah. don't know. I can the understand. Streets, you have to be prepared because I can they understand. Will, they will try you. You just matching the temperament you. based off of what, what what you need to do. It's like, oh, I live in this environment. This is how people act. Yeah, I gotta be ready. That's very true. Because when I took um when I took the bus here, um from Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like the escalator at Port Authority is man small. Like it's really only meant for yeah, when I'm, one, one person. Line. Yeah, exactly. When I'm and I'm not walking down the escalator. Like yeah. I'm not about to fall yeah. just to get there quicker. I'm, I'm gonna get to my destination regardless. Mm -hmm. So this, I mind you, I'm calm. I'm in a good mood. Mm -hmm. This girl walked by. This girl um, came behind me. I was like, "Excuse me, I she want to get down the thing." Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Okay, no problem. Just be careful, cause you know this area is really small." Mm -hmm. So, so but I'm making move, room for her to get by, and she was like, "That's not really my problem." I said, "Bitch, what the fuck you said?" Yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, because that was unnecessary. But like you said, matching the temper. Yes, yeah. It's I was the, quick. The temperament. I'm like, "Bitch, what, the, quick, what that? Quick. What was that about?" Yeah, man. People, the aggression here is you real. Fool. Mm -mm. Right, and then she ran away. I couldn't find her when I got down to the escalator. Now she ran, now she ran away. away. <laughs> 
I was like, damn. Because, you know, she dipped. Because I'm not done. I matched yeah. the energy and she I wasn't ready for it. Exactly. She That's what it was. It. Yeah. Yeah, no. I still match that energy. Mm-hmm. But you're Boy. right. I definitely grew up in the hood, so I always had to be ready. People got jumped in McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I've heard horrible stories about New York and what it's like here. You look up I mean? the sto- so, look up stories regarding Erasmus. Regarding what? Erasmus, the, the um school. Evil. Okay. Erasmus. Yeah, it's like Erasmus have like seven schools in it. Really? Two middle schools and the rest is high schools. Yeah, I've heard all kinds of stuff. I've heard all type of shit. So I'm 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 really fortunate that um <laughs> that I've never had any issues, never had any altercations. I hear a lot. I hear a lot of stories. So I, I'm never like ignorant to what's going on around me, but like. I've had nothing but a good experience in New York. Ain't nobody ever came for me. I never felt like a nigga was trying to get the drop on me or nothing like that. So That's great. I'm, I'm grateful for that because I know that it can. It, I know how real it can get here, even based yeah. off of this story and some other stuff. Yeah, I've heard. My, whole, my whole like development life, my life, where you, the part of like where you do a lot of your development was yeah. just aggression. Yeah. <laughs> like at home in school, yeah. like it was too much. Yeah. <laughs> you, def- you definitely got a big heart because like even I don't know any of those things that you're sharing with me about since I've known you but like all I know about you is being like charismatic very bubbly always positive you seem very optimistic very confident you know what I mean so My it's like has grown okay? yeah so you definitely Excessively. you got a big heart you just really got a big heart yeah and I, I really I like protection I think so when it comes like because of the protecting part I'm like I can't I can't be with a man or a near man if I feel like they can't protect me. Oh, you shouldn't be. That shit bothers me so much. Yeah, I should not feel you? like I can beat a nigga up before you do. Yeah, why would you? Exactly. Why would you? Because why are you here if yeah, you're not why, adding why you? anything to That's help important. me be That's safe, important. help me be good in this life, you know? Part of, part of you getting what you want from a woman is protecting her. That's just like literally half the bargain immediately. So like right. when you come into... A relationship, you like this. Is what I want in a relationship, protection is half the thing you bargaining with. So if you don't have that, it's like they can't ask me for shit. Right? Can't get nothing from me. I can't see that. Nothing. It's like on to the next. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Ah, I grew up a lot. <laughs> but since we like been on the topic of identity, I wanted to. I have a couple questions I'm gonna bring out for every, for all of us to mm-hmm. answer. And one of them that I really think I would love to hear your response to Wolf is: Do you think crying is a sign of weakness or a strength? Crying is not a sign of weakness. Um, there's a time and place for everything, though. So I think crying is good. You know, like, you you can't heal from nothing that you don't reveal. You can't heal from anything that's hiding. You know what I mean? So if you're not crying, it's sometimes because you're seeing the emotion. You know, it's it's right there on your spirit. It's right there on your soul. That's usually the time. I mean, depending on why you're crying, you know what I mean? Because, like, one thing my father taught me, my dad cries all the time when he's happy. You know what I mean? So, like... Whenever my dad drops me off at the airport, you know what I mean? Like, he, every time it's like clockwork, me and my sister, like, we's like, he gonna cry like 10 minutes from now. You know what I mean? He cries, you know? And um, that's just the type of man he is. So that's good. That's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? And then sometimes when you're in pain, you need to cry. So crying is like ventilation for the soul. It's something that's very necessary. But at the same time, though, as a man, we have a lot of duties. We have a lot of things that it is our birthright to be. And it is not always the appropriate time to cry. You know what I mean? Sometimes you need to do that at a later time. Sometimes you need to get on your shit, tighten up, you're too loose. You know what I mean? So you really have to use your discernment in times like that. So no, crying is not weakness, but it's a time and a place for it. Don't be crying all the fucking time, though. (laughs) Like cry, cry later. Handle your business and cry later. Yeah, because normally when you think of a man crying, it's like, oh, he's weak. Why is he doing that? But it's like, no, like he's human, just like me, just like any woman who cries, whether they're going through something bad, something good, Mm -hmm. something sad, anything. We all cry. Like it's a normal emotion. Just like how when you were talking about how to build a sex room and I was like, yo, we all have sex. So why is it that sex has always been such a taboo topic? Right. Right. We all cry. We all eat. We all do basic human things. So why are we punishing men for crying? Well, I never understood that. I I really never did. Like, and I could say I've only boys. seen a, one man cry in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't tell little boys, hey, don't cry. That's not what boys do. And people do that. Yeah. You got to correct aunties and uncles. Hey, we got to oh correct God. them whenever we hear them say that because they do still say that. Like, they no, no, do no. still say that. Don't tell him that. If he wants to cry, let him cry. He's a kid. Let him cry. Yeah. Crying is good. Just make sure, especially like as a young boy, like I don't have a son, but like if my son were to cry, right, it's okay to cry, but make sure... You're crying for 
for lack of a better way to say it, the right reasons. You know what I mean? Because everything's not worth crying over. Mm. I think that's the distinction that needs to be had. You know, it's like if you, that's a, that's okay to cry for. Go ahead and cry. Let that out. And then other things, it's like there's no reason to cry about this. You know what I mean? Like that's how you feel now, so get it out. Mm-hmm. But moving forward, though, understand that there are better, more productive ways to deal with this feeling or this emotion as a little boy. Because cry, but you can't, a, a man who cries about everything would definitely be a weak man, for sure. Right, no one would take him seriously. He, not even himself. Because why are you always crying? Yo, that, yo, that would be, that definitely used to crying? be a type, like, why are you always crying? Don't be crying all the time. <laughs> the world will not favor you. The world will not show you love. Oh my God. You know when your parents, I don't know if you experienced it, Wolf, but in a Nigerian household, mm-hmm. if you got to say they just yelled at you and you started crying like because your feelings just hurt, you don't know. It could be any situation. It could be that they actually are the wrong and the wrong, mm-hmm. but you're crying. Their first response would be like, oh, what are you crying for? I'm going to give you something to cry about now. Yeah, my, my mom has said that before. Mommy, I know you're probably watching this, so I love you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my mom has said that before. So it's just something that parents say. Right, but it's just, it'd be like, okay, should I not cry? It's kind of, I think it kind of builds like confusion in that area, in the upbringing. Like, because I'm crying because obviously I'm feeling some type of way, but now you say you want to mm-hmm. give me something to cry about, which is in result something violent. Mm-hmm. Like, why is that? Yeah. Why are we like that? Why is violence our answer? Yeah, parents don't. Hey, we don't know. They don't know a lot, man. They're, They're just doing what their the best parents they can. did to them. Yeah, the best that they can, what they know. Yeah. They don't really like change. If what they know has been working Man. all this time, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah, that's the, what's the point of change? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. It's broke. That's the mentality. It's broke. It's hey, broken. You, we know that, but you get, you that's give the it mentality. Over here, give it broken children and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're doing the best they can. Like, they you know, do. I, I give parents a lot of empathy. I really do. Like, even though they don't get it right and some parents get it way fucked up more than other ones, mm-hmm. like, you just got to consider where your parents come from, Mm -hmm. who raised your parents, what kind of experience that your parents have. And then they had you. You thought that they just became a guru all of a sudden? Like, (laughs) they they did But, like, they got the blueprint. Anyone who becomes a parent, they don't know how to be a parent until they actually They don't know. Yeah, by the time you have a grandchild, everything they fucked up with you, they're going to get right with your kid. Yep. That is so true. You're going to be like, you used to whoop my ass for that same thing. Now they got all this love in their heart now, all this empathy (laughs) now. I know better now. About my child. I know better now. Like, I could have never got away with that. Right. How dare you say that? That's why the youngest kid always had the best experience. Like the first kid had it the hardest, the middle kid, sure uh. Is. <laughs> you know, and then the last kid, it's like, oh, that's the baby they spoiled. It's because the parents they figured it out. Yeah, even I'm not gonna lie, I'll be spoiling any. Like she got me so mad, she didn't want to <laughs> do like one little favor for me, but she would had the nerve to ask me for five dollars for Starbucks, and I kept no. saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. And then she just like asked one more time. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna send it. <laughs> oh, for real, that ass. Because she called me the other day, and I'm like, dang. And he's calling. Let me give it to her. Yeah, she's trying to guilt trip me the other day. She was like, Dami always sends me money. Why don't you send me anything? I'm like, I don't know why Dami is giving this girl money. Because now she thinks she could be asking anybody yeah, for money. She think, yeah, she thinks fat meat ain't greasy. Okay, so another question I wanted to ask too was, um, what do you want the most? What do I want the most? What do you want the most in life? And it, you can you can have you know something specific to you that you already know. It could be I your mean, desires. It could be. I just want to be at peace. Like Boom. I don't want to yeah. have to worry or stress. Ooh. You know, it'd be the little things that we stress about a lot of the times. You know, it's a whole bunch of little shit, then it adds up. I don't yeah. want to stress. I want to be comfortable. You know. Yeah. Peace, happy. That's really all I care about. Soft life. Soft life. <laughs> Soft life. Yeah, has you know, to making be sure me and my family's good. That's. That's good. That's all I care about, honestly. Right? All That's I what I want. It, it has to be peace. It just has to be. Because it's like no amount of... I believe that no amount of material possession will really get you right. You know what I mean? Like you'll always find yourself swaying back and forth emotionally. You know, like it's we say peace, right? Because it's like when you build a house, you built that shit on concrete. You know, so no matter what type of crazy ass Hurricane Sandy weather wants to come along... The house will hopefully still be there. You know what I mean? Depending on the foundation of the house. With the foundation being peace. The foundation that's peace. When you have peace in your spirit and your soul, that means like, regardless of what's happening outside of me, the the stillness inside of me has not been shaken. You know, and that is the most powerful person, the most regal person, usually a grandmother or a grandparent or something like that. So 
It just has to be peace because nothing else is going to work. The car is not going to work. The Tesla not going to work. The mansion not going to work. Going to break eventually. The unlimited <gasps> amount of sex is not going to work. The peace going to stop once the car stop working. <laughs> It's not going to work. No, that's true because it'd be mad stress. Oh, where's my car parts? Oh, the engineer trying to um, jip me for this. Or is it the mechanic? Either one. The house, Because the, the material job. things, that's not really what matters. Right. Like, that's not at all yeah. what matters. What you do with yourself. Like, even us starting this podcast, we truly enjoy doing this. Like, we have a vision, we have a mission, and we know that we're going to accomplish it. Right. Because we're doing what we got to do to make sure... Right. We're still in our core values, you know. Mm. Eventually, we'll blow up, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll be wealthy. Yeah, but at least we know when we started out, when we started everything out, we were true to ourselves. We did what we wanted and look at how, where we got Yeah, from doing what we wanted to do. That's true. Look at where we are. Yeah. You're right, because once I quit that job, started working less, but also but working in other places in my life. It's like, it don't matter how busy I get, or even if my room becomes like a clutter, mm-hmm. I'm still happy with where I'm at. But mm-hmm. I, f- I find peace to be something very difficult for everybody to find. It's very, it's hard. Like, how did we go about finding it? Like, how want. did you find it? How did y'all uh, find it? How did I find it? Well, I haven't found peace yet. I'm on my <laughs> journey still. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting there. But yeah. I mean, I feel like it's just knowing what you want, honestly, and knowing that. If you truly want it, you can do anything to get that. Like, if you believe in yourself, I feel like I'm going on a whole tangent, but... No, not at all. Knowing, not. not at all. Knowing what you want, like, believing in yourself, knowing that, okay, I like to do makeup. I'm going to make sure I am the I am the most skilled at doing eyebrows, foundation, all of that stuff. I'm going to make sure people know that I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to put that out there so, you know, people find me in... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My train of thought kind of like having just having contempt in your life, you know, like being happy with where you are, accepting yourself, appreciating yourself, mm-hmm. not comparison yourself. Like, as they right. say, um, comparison is the thief of joy, you know what it I mean? And the is. rich people are the joyous people, you know what I mean? So, and not thinking, stop thinking so stop much. Stop thinking, oh my god, stop thinking because I'll be thinking about every little thing. I'm like such an overthinker, she's a perfectionist. I'm such an overthinker, yeah, me too. And a perfectionist, yeah, you're right. Such a horrible habit to have. It but is it's also I... so good because you know once you put it out, yeah, it's perfect. But because you're yeah. such a perfectionist, it takes you longer to put something <clears throat> out that you could just put out. Yeah, done that is better is than perfect. That's a great quote. That it I took me a by. while to understand I like that. that. Done is better than it perfect. Done me... is better than perfect. Oh, I got a so new true. one. I'm gonna start saying that shit every day. Done is better, Done is better yeah. than perfect. Live with mm-hmm. that. Right? Just and embarrassment's a choice. <laughs> please look. Please title the episode Embarrassment is a Choice. <laughs> it is a choice. Please title I have me. done some crazy things in my life. Me and too. I am not embarrassed about none of it. Anytime I think about something embarrassing, I start singing. <laughs> That's like a random human quirk I have. Like I'll think about something random, I'll be like, oh, it's some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly let out a sound. And it just be like, so you. it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know what it is, but it like something about me just Maybe just scrub the like thought, like they don't even think about that shit. Like, uh, I'm cringing right now. <laughs> if you're like, when you're embarrassed, you try to do something. So, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover up that embarrassment. I'm gonna just cover you're it. You're not gonna know that I did that. I'm not embarrassed anymore. You're gonna, you're gonna listen to what I have to say now. <laughs> <laughs> just I laugh. Shit. If something embarrassing happens to me, I laugh. Like, and I'll laugh to let, and it, my laughing will let everybody in the room know that something just happened. Yeah. Instead of me keeping it to myself, I'm showing it. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not embarrassed. That happened. <laughs> like, I fell at a graduation, walking down the aisle, mm. and it was like a small auditorium. So everybody saw that I fell. Hell yeah, they did. <laughs> and yeah. I was on the floor still laughing. I didn't get up yet. I was just on the floor <laughs> laughing. No That's way. That's beautiful, though. <laughs> I, I fell down the stairs one time. This was in school. Everyone saw me. And instead of like getting up, they were laughing. I didn't get up, though. I stayed on the floor and I started crying. Because now you're going to feel bad because I broke my ankle. You broke your ankle before? Not really. Oh. But you're gonna feel bad. You're gonna feel bad about laughing because I felt now nah, I got a broken ankle. Right, but were you embarrassed? After the fact, no. I was embarrassed during the fall year, but once I stayed on the floor, I'm like, there's no need to be embarrassed. I'm hurt. Yeah, real shit. That's right. how I look at it. It's like I'm it's hurt. a different thing now. <laughs> that, right, because embarrassment is a choice. You either right. you choose to be embarrassed. But everything is a choice though, y'all. It really is. 
<laughs> Everything is a choice. <laughs> See, some people would be afraid to do something like that. Right. But they would be like, oh, that's embarrassing. Why am I acting like that? That's weird. That's just because they're not that's comfortable not with themselves. That's true. Ooh, they're not comfortable. That's true. You done touched a nerve. I'm just saying. <laughs> and they don't have peace. Like over here like... <laughs> they don't have peace. Why are you talking about me like that? <laughs> <laughs> Get the twitches. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. So, um... These are good so, questions. Yeah, they are, right? So this goes back to the question about who am I? Mm. Who's Wolf? So who is Wolf? Do y'all know my real name? That's not Wolf is not your real name. You've been deceiving us. Wolf, do not play a sister like that. My mother named me Steven. (gasps) No way. You're a Steven with a PH or a V. With a V. Thank you for asking. Anytime people ask me, I'll be like, I fucks with you. Because... The P and the V, we different niggas, bro. We not the yeah. same. Yeah. We niggas, we're not the same, bro. Yeah, so I'm Steven with the V. Uh, my name is Steven Lawrence Taylor. That is my full name. Um, Steven and Wolf. But I have to say that because I go by Wolf. Everybody call me Wolf. Everybody back home call me Wolf. Everybody here calls me Wolf. But Steven and Wolf are the same person, though. There's like There is no distinction between them. You know what I mean? Um Wolf is a nickname I got, like, you know, being young in Dallas and having a lot of friends. And that's, like, kind of street culture. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you just give each other nicknames and stuff like that. And so that's the nickname that I got. And I just stuck with it because I like it. I like it a lot. I probably named my son Wolf, like, for sure. He'll, he'll be Wolf. Uh, now we brought y'all a surprise and he come and surprise us. No, for real. What? Steven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Wolf is... I like Wolf better though. Yeah. I like Wolf too. I love Wolf. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the same guy. So there's no like switching of personalities mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Wolf is... In that sense, that's who Wolf is. And in a, in a different sense, Wolf is a young person just like y'all trying to make it in the world. Trying to keep his peace together, trying to keep his stress low, mm-hmm. trying to eat as healthy as he can, try to go to sleep at an appropriate time every night. You know what I mean? Wolf is just trying to get it, like like all of us is, hopefully, hopefully trying to get it. You know, Wolf is actually, you've inspired our show. Mm. So whenever we do the segment where we talk about food, we like try to give a vegan kind of like option. Oh, tight, yeah. Yeah, how you can do it if you're vegan or vegetarian. So yeah, you know, you're like a little imprint on us. Dope. Yeah, you did. That's what we we should do. Because we fucks with you. So we invite you to barbecue. We want you to be able to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I really appreciate that too. Yeah. Plus, I'm a fake vegan. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, I'm a fake vegan. Everybody in the house could tell you. Like, Like, I will go. She tries to eat healthy. Not that she tries. She does, but she'll still go back to a little. Those are the first steps, though. Those are the first steps. (laughs) Yeah, because I did vegan for like a good month before and I thought I was dying. I was like, I can't do this. Nah, nah, nah. And I went straight into it. I mean, like, I just went straight into it. I didn't transition yeah but like you yeah, know i'm still fake vegan because once in a while like i'm like okay i'm having a vegan day and i, I was just be, i used to be fake vegan so i get it <laughs> okay great because my mom be yeah. coming for me she'd be like look at this fake vegan eating chicken <laughs> all right not isn't it your vegan chicken though Damn. no no, no i'll be eating actual chicken chicken though. sound good right now what vegan chicken not the real chicken Nah, you vegan. No, I am. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold on now, you vegan, don't do that. Like, that shit sounds good. I still be having, I'm like, I still have urges and shit. Like, right now, I would love to get drunk right now. Oh, so you don't drink either? Mm-mm. Oh. Which, that doesn't have nothing to do with being vegan, so I don't even know why I said that. But that's something I'm dealing with right now, though. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I would love to eat chicken right the fuck now. I would love a steak. Oh. I love a steak. At least you're honest. With cheese. Because there be people, there's like, you know, people that are Pepper vegan Jack. and it just kind of goes to the extreme. And they're like, yeah, I can't mention, they won't mention steak. They won't mention chicken. But you're yeah. honest. I mean, you bro, you got to be, again, you got to be comfortable with who you are. And it's like, it's not a competition or no shit, right? right. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm. that's what I do because I got my own personal needs and shit like that. But I didn't become vegan because I don't like the way other food tastes though. Ooh, like some ribs right now. <laughs> I don't got the nail. Can you do the nails for me right now? Man. I would. Y- y'all hear these nails? This is a spiritual practice right now. This is our love for food. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, well, if you wasn't vegan, there's this restaurant called Texas Day Brazil, Man. and it's literally like in Jersey. I don't know where it's at. It was in Buffalo. It was like a meat galore. I mean, they would just come with. Different kind of steaks, chicken, sausages oh my God. on a sword, and like you have oh, yeah. a card, I, you flip I heard it, it's green, that. and they. Oh, what what is the uh the meal 
that is in um, Nigerian culture specifically. It's chicken, it's rice. The rice got like bell peppers or something like that in it. Jollof fried rice? Jollof rice. Jollof or fried rice. So what's up? No, it's jollof. It's definitely jollof, jollof. rice. It's but, like orange, reddish. Yes. Yeah, jollof. Oh, jollof. Man, I was talking to this African Nigerian girl one time a couple years ago, and um, her mom made like a bunch of jollof rice with like chicken. It's a little different than how I grew up having it. Mm-hmm. Man, when I tell you, I was fucking that shit up. Yeah. I was fucking it up and then she sent me home with a stupid amount of it like so I was eating on it for the next like four days it yeah they do, they cook like, like that it was amazing cook it in bulk it was right. amazing mm-hmm. she thought I was lying I was dead ass I was like listen this is some of the best food I've ever had but that's crazy life. because whenever I make jello fries and people are like oh it tastes so good it's good I'm like it's regular to me. I mean, yeah, yeah it's good. I'd be like, oh, I didn't do it as good enough. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm critiquing my my food all the time. Mm. Like, mm, this don't taste like the last time. Next time, I'm I'm add this. I'm add that. Right. <laughs> so, um, but it's nice to know you who you are. And what, what. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not for a surprise. Then. Yeah, not nah, for for real. Like I was about to say, Steven. I'm yeah. like, nah, well. I gotta tell people because I don't want people thinking like I'm I'm not proud of who I am. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it, they're the exact same person. So it's not. I'm not hiding or I'm not trying to... It is what you prefer. It's just what I prefer. It's just, you know, depending on who I'm talking to. Like, people know me as that here, so I just go by that. But I'm also comfortable letting you know that my name is Steven. I fucks with it. Nice Thank to meet you, you Steven. My pleasure to meet you as well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dami? Um, who is Rebecca? Who, who is Rebecca? Who is, Rebecca? Who is Dami? Are those the same people? I mean... Yeah, they're the same person. It's just... Actually, they are the same person, but they're like two sides of the same person. So Rebecca is what everyone knows me at knows me as, you know, the the calm, introverted, you know, sweet girl, Rebecca. And then Damilola, that's what family knows me at as. I don't really know how I portray myself to other people in my family. How do how, how would you describe me? Um just quick, brief. How would you describe me? I would say Cuz I really don't I'm beauty sorry. Guru. Beauty for girl? sure, yeah, definitely the beauty guru, okay. tech savvy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like quiet, it. Go on. <laughs> quiet, but can has yo know, the quietness that you were when we were younger is not the same. Thank God. Cause yeah, because I'm bro. I'm it was you. horrible when we were younger. Like she would not talk. You would have thought yeah. she was mute. But yeah, you're, just, you're reserved. Yeah, very reserved. B- very reserved. Very mm-hmm. But she definitely comes out. You come out your show once in a while. You're willing to explore the world. Yeah, just because I'm tired bit. of being quiet. I want to know what's going on. That's why I asked on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I talk. I'm on a podcast and I talk all the time. Right. And that's also another thing. Like you know how I'm. I'm really making like TikTok videos and all right. that stuff. Right. Yeah. You I want to def- make more. You're but- more. Out, you put yourself out there more than I do on social media. I, my social media is yo whack compared to hers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm gonna say? I feel like what you just said that's true because I've always been so closed off to people. So I found my path, I guess you can mm-hmm. say, through my phone, through my computer. Yeah, that's probably why I'm so tech savvy. I'm always on the fucking computer, so yeah. I'm I, gonna, I know how to do it. And I refuse to be like that. Like my TikToks yeah. and everything, and Instagrams is nothing like hers. It's my part kids. of your nature too, because you're you do get to do it while you're at home by yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So that's part of her being reserved, right. and you're like more social, more outgoing naturally. Right. So it's like you'll thrive in a group full of people or a whole crowd full of people. That's kind of how it goes, though. I flex it. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. I like who you are. Thank you. Then- I like who I am too. I like who I'm becoming. I like the person that I'm now starting to show other people because, like you said, I was quiet, reserved. Like, if you, you would never hear me talk. Honestly, I would talk so low. Right. That. Very low. I'd be like, yo. So fucking If low. somebody's sitting next to me and they're not speaking loud enough, I'd be like, yo, speak a little bit louder. <laughs> like, I can't hear you. <laughs> like, say that shit. I'd be like, yo, I'd be like, say that shit with your chest. <laughs> Literally, say it with your chest. All of it. Right here. In this <laughs> yo, if this mic wasn't in the way out of that, boom, boom. Right here. Like how the football players be doing, or the players when they um when they happy they get high. Let's yeah. go. I'm mean, like, say that shit with your chest. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell us who is Mukri? Who's Mukri? Um the Mukri, Mukri. Well, I'm gonna be very honest. Mukri is the person that everyone gets to meet. And she is very trusting of people and at least very willing to trust someone before she doesn't trust them. Then, you know, give people the opportunity to fuck up if they fuck up. Um, I'll say forgiving. 
Um, very charismatic, as he said. Mm-hmm. I do like to be very- that joy when someone comes into the room. I feel like I'm also starting to embody my middle name, which is Ayokumi, which means joy has it's filled a me. Name. Thank you. Ayokumi means joy has filled me. And mm. I feel like um that person is who comes into the room all mm. the time. But um I I'm actually okay with putting names to my personalities. Cause if I'm Feeling calm or quiet or reserved, there's Keisha Harris. Yes. Not Keisha Harris. There's Keisha Harris. Whole, yo, she has Wait a whole playlist Wait a dedicated to Miss Keisha Harris. There is a whole Keisha. Are you are you a do you have a crush on T.I.? Uh no. It was somebody. <laughs> there was somebody who had a song, maybe back Jacob then. Jacob Lattimore. Yes, Jacob Lattimore. He's oh, like, Keisha, God. Keisha. She love that man. Oh, Keisha. <laughs> Man, I really want to meet you. Hey, Keisha. Yeah. that's And that, that playlist makes sense. Yes, I'm going to share my playlist with you, Wolf. So, yes, Keisha, she's like the love. She She's into love. She believes in love. You know, Keisha wants to get married so bad. <laughs> but, you know, we don't know about that. Um, And then there's Roxanne Monroe. She's kind of the bougie bitch. Like, if, you, if I walk into a room and I'm... Being confident, I'm walking like I own the room. I'm as, as Roxanne Monroe has entered the room. <laughs> Most definitely has entered the room. Um, there's Tommy. Tommy's my little Tommy. Sec- yes, you don't know about Tommy because Tommy's my sexual side. Oh. Yeah, like that's my sexual side. Like I mean, heels, lingerie, yeah, the whole shebang. Yeah, <laughs> the whole shebang. That's Tommy. Okay. I have a playlist for Tommy too. You do? Oh my gosh. Do yeah. you have a playlist for Roxanne too? No, I haven't made one for her. Because they don't make a lot of songs that's just about confidence. You know, just straight up confidence mm. while belittling somebody else. You know what I mean? Mm. So I really haven't gotten that playlist together yet. Mm. And then there's... a Mookie is just the nickname. That's that's work. Everybody... Mookie is work. And then Cookie... Cookie is family. Mm. Family. Anybody that knows me by Cookie... Has known me on a intimate level, like not everybody knows that name. Like everybody calls me, even my big mommy. They call she calls me Cookie. Mm. But you know, you can't say that name to people in our culture or in our age because they hear Cookie and like, oh, that, you know, that's a stripper name. That's a that's derogatory. Mm. So only family really know Cookie, mm. and Cookie's just embodies all of them. Mm. So yeah, I put different person. I put names to my personalities, but I am like all in one. Yeah, that's why. So it makes sense. Like I did theater, so mm. I I kind of like to switch. I yeah, have my sure. days. Sure, you got so, layers. So Mukramat is the la- is layers. Let's just say that's the cake. Yeah, that's the cake. That's the cake. All of them combined makes Mukramat. It's very flavorful. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my god. Okay, so on to our next segment, because I really like this conversation. This was fun. Yeah. Um, on to our next conversation. Why jam? Why means come eat. Mm. So you hear someone like why jam? Sometimes they say it a little bit aggression. Yeah, why jam? Oh yeah, why jam? Oh yeah, means like um, like hurry up. Yeah, mm. come on and eat. So why jam? Mm. Um, and I wanted to talk about our family's traditional breakfast. Is I'm gonna say it's traditional because I honestly we do it with every family member. Every Sunday, either before church or after church, really depending Mostly on Mostly after church. Yeah, because the service be long. Mm. Yeah. And if we eat that before we go to church, we're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> For real. And it's yam and pepper eggs, or let's say sometimes it's yam and corned beef stew, mm. or yam and uh, marcross stew. Um, so the stew is really blended tomatoes, peppers, habanero peppers, Mm -hmm. onions, maybe garlic. And sometimes they'll put um, ground corned beef in it. Not ground beef, corned beef specifically. They'll put corned beef in it. And if it's not a meat, red meat kind of day, they will put marcrell in it. Um, And what they'll do is take the Ghana yam, because there's different kind of yams, specifically Ghana yams. They would um, slice it. These thick slices, they kind of almost look like, I would say dumplings. Like if you're Caribbean, yeah, they kind of mm-hmm. look like they kind of look like dumplings. Um, we'll take the um, 
the outer layer off of it, either with a knife or with um, I the use peeler. the peeler because yeah. I'm I'm not about to do all that with a knife. <laughs> I use the peeler, and you kind of rinse the yam off. You want to, and you will boil it in water, if with salt and sugar to make it sweet. I've had it extremely sweet at some points. You know, just add mad sugar. That sounds good. It is good, and then you eat it with eggs. So you. A lot of, you, when I grew up, like if you were younger, the kids ate it with regular plain scrambled eggs mm -hmm. and butter and, butter, mm -hmm. and it put butter on the ham. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's very, it will knock you out. It's it so gives good. you the itis. Yeah. And it keeps you full. It like, gives you, that's why you have to eat it Ooh. after church. Yeah. It's kind of like a, like a Popeye's biscuit. You're going to need a beverage with that yam. Yes. So right mm -hmm. And then, so those were the stew and they either make it with pepper eggs so pepper eggs says it says it in his name like but you will hear it more like when nigerian saying pepe instead of pepper mm. pepe eggs mm. um and it's really in our household we don't use red bell peppers we just use tomatoes onions and habanero peppers mm. i don't know if you actually use red bell peppers no yeah right really. it's too thick when i make pepper eggs different yeah, we so yeah, yeah. We, everybody makes it different, but in our house, in my house, that's how we make it, and we'll season it with we'll season the vegetables, um, dice the vegetables up, and season it with adobo. Mm. I've added black pepper. My mom doesn't do black pepper. I love adobo. Adobo mm -hmm. salt, um, paprika. Yeah, I've changed. Yeah, the seasonings I used to use before, I don't use that anymore because it's salt based, a whole lot of salt. And I'm trying to yeah. stare clear from mm -hmm. like salt based, you know, spices and yeah. seasonings. Yeah. So I use like onion powder, maybe. Right. Um, like a salt free garlic. garlic. Yeah. They have like a mixed spice. I forget. It's like in this per blue bottle. I forgot what it was called, but it's salt free. It has the um, garlic, pepper. And all a whole bunch of other shit, onion powder oil, all that shit. It's like a mixed spice. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, it is. I feel like it's evolved. It has evolved in our house. Like I, as you know, you get older, you start adding your own mix to the shit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So now, like, I'll take like the spinach and I'll cut it up and put spinach in it. My mom has never done that before, so I was like, oh, that's that's my yeah my twist. yeah my Sunday mm -hmm. breakfast, the yam and my egg, my pepper egg has evolutionized is that is that a word yeah for okay. sure definitely okay i was gonna say mutated but i like <laughs> <laughs> i like evolutionized better yeah. it's changed from being just you know regular pepper egg to egg sandwiches now i don't eat it with yam anymore i just make egg sandwiches right and i put whatever i want in my eggs if i want spinach normally i put like purple onions tomatoes and then i add my spices and I just put it in my in my bread. Honestly? The avocado, maybe cream cheese. Oh my god, I did it with I'm avocado sure. before, like in the sandwich with the pepper eggs. Mm -hmm. Mad good. Yeah, for sure. It's so, so good. Oh, I yeah. love me some pepper eggs. It's a lot of flavor. But if you're gonna eat yam, be careful because it's definitely gonna knock you out. But um, some people don't always use yam. Some people will use like those whole same salt, water, sugar, but use potatoes. Right. So it's a little bit lighter. It's mm -hmm. more softer to chew yeah, as well. Yeah, way softer. Way mm -hmm. softer. Yam, you're gonna have. You better have some straw teeth. <laughs> it's, yam is I'm hard. You're gonna need like two bottles of water because that yam be dry sometimes. Damn. If you cut it too, because people be cutting it too thick. Yeah. If you could try to get it the right size you're it would, right yeah but it's when you the thicker it is the harder it is mm -hmm. to eat yeah. I, but you know with the knife and the yam and how strong it is you're like, I feel like sometimes that knife will be fighting you it will be going yeah. you gotta have that good and knife you have to have that good arm yeah okay <laughs> you have that good arm cause that yam be hard I be twisting the yam like this while I'm cutting yeah, you got to damn it going. if you don't get it right you gonna damn it cut yourself it's so hard yeah, yeah for real well. mm -hmm. I've done it and the Sunday dinner you were gonna explain that to us what's right like, what's your Sunday dinner okay. because Sunday we have dinner. Sunday breakfast in our Nigerian culture and mm -hmm. we know you're American mm -hmm. so it's like it's kind of interesting how Nigerians have the Sunday breakfast thing going on mm -hmm. and then you come and meet an African American mm -hmm. and they are all about Sunday dinners like everybody yeah. knows Sunday dinners mm -hmm. yeah so you tell us about that um I would definitely say Sunday dinner is definitely pretty much just soul food for the most part which um Soul food is black eyed peas, it's fried chicken, it could, it's greens, it's mac and cheese, yams, oh man, ribs, pork chops. It could be so many. Good one. Yeah. Ooh. It could be so many. It could really be so many things. So it's really just steak. Um, <laughs> man, yeah. He's been craving that steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mashed potato, gravy, 
So yeah, that's it's just really just soul food, and it usually comes after church. So y'all just like at the church too, right? After yeah. church, yeah. Yeah. Because if we do it before church, we might knock out. Yeah. So our catfish. Oh my god. I've never been a fan of catfish. I like Man, catfish, but I never you. had my it loves the it. American way. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, just. You just have all that usually after church, usually after the second service or something like that. And you sit down with a bunch of hungry people <laughs> and then it's quiet as hell because all you hear <laughs> all you hear is people eating, you know, because we just, you know, you feeding soul food, you're feeding the soul. So mm-hmm. that would be that would be Having Sunday dinner. Happy. Yeah. Um, you said yams. Wait, is it the same kind of yams that we eat? Yeah, so it's the, it comes from the same. Uh, is, I don't know if yam is a it's, a it's a vegetable, so it's the same vegetable. You know what I mean? It's just you just preparing it like they call it like candy yams. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's the candy yams, or uh, there's a lot of different ways you can prepare it. So you could have it like how you would do it, like a baked potato. You know, you could like boil it, cut it, fill it with whatever, or just eat it with a spoon right out that way. Or you could um, turn it into like mashed potatoes, kind of. Except you do it. It's almost like a dessert. So you put. Uh, Cinnamon, brown sugar, and then you know it's like it's sweet, but it is it goes with dinner though, and they call it candy DMs. I think I had candy DMs before, and I was so confused. Yeah, because yeah. I I think when I saw it, I was like, because my ex boyfriend, he is American, mm-hmm. like straight American. So mm-hmm. I think I spent like a Christmas with them, and. He was like, "Oh, these are candy yams." I'm like, "That don't look like yams. That, yeah. looks, that looks scary. Like, why is it? Why is it like? Why is it orange?" Yeah, it exactly. Was, I was confused. I'm like, "Cause I know yam to be white." So I'm like, "Why?" Is oh, it, whoa, 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 whoa! It, it was orange. Am I bugging? Maybe that wait, was. Wait, wait, wait! I'm like, hold on, wait. Your yams are orange. It was. I mean, white. It, it, yeah, it's white. yeah, our yams are white. Okay. <laughs> yeah, white yams. When I now think of that, orange, I'm thinking of okay. sweet potato. That's yams. Uh, oh, to us, really? So sweet potato is yams. That's oh. what makes candy yams. That's how you make candy yams with sweet potato. Sweet potato. Listen, don't let me be up here saying the wrong shit. If I got it, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I got it wrong, somebody uh, correct me in the comments. But I, I, I believe that's what it is, though. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, it is. Okay, right. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I've eaten sweet potatoes before. Because you like, saying yams, I'm like I've never seen a white yam. Yeah, Ghana yams are white. Yeah, they're it's like a, on the it's outside. like a big like circular it's like a log. block. Like yeah, a like log. a clog, like not like yeah, you're right. A log. And the <laughs> vegetable is white. Yeah, and yeah, inside Once you is white. Peel it, it's white. You cut. That's it the into actual like name spices. of it. Is a yam? Yeah. yeah. I'm about to. You know, okay. We, we, I got my iPad right. Yeah, here. put me on. Teach me something. Yeah. What? You see? Now there goes the confusion because we over here. I'm thinking like, okay, white? Or are you talking about orange? We thinking white. He's thinking orange. Like orange. Oh. Yeah, I'm thinking because that's the only way I've ever seen it. You know, I've never. If if it's white, I'm gonna just assume it's just a potato. Nah, you know, mm-hmm. it's I love not. potatoes too. By the way, man, this I love potatoes listen. too. Mashed potato. Oh my I god, have that any look, yeah, oh mm. here, Ghana yam. What about hash browns? You fuck with hash browns? I fuck with hash brown. A good hash brown bro from Waffle House <laughs> would make me so happy wow. right now. You cut it in like circles and then you peel it off. You boil it, add yeah. the salt and water, and boom. So I guess it's just like just different, just like carrots, right? It's like there's a purple one, a white one, yeah. and an orange one. So maybe it's the same thing with. The yams. That kind of yam. Because like, there's, I, I know there's Ghana yams, and then I think there's like Mexican yams and stuff. Mm. Like they're they're very drastically different. Mm. They're all different, yeah. Because like where we get yams from is like an African market, you know, when they have their own stores. But if you go to like the regular supermarket, we can't like, find. It. There's so many different yams, you can't find the yam that you want. Yeah, but, and we never find Ghana. I never find never. Ghana yams in a regular supermarket. Never. That makes I sense always go to an African it. market to get the yams. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Why well, I've never seen it because I'm going to like the regular market for the most part, and they right. have sweet potatoes. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so we just turn it, in, turn it into yams real quick. So now we learn something new. Yeah. Candied yams is sweet potato. Yeah, just made it. A different way. Interesting. I've seen people add marshmallow to it. Yeah, I've seen that too. That's that's too much for me. You know what I mean? It's very sugary. I feel like that's more white. You know what I mean? Like I think (laughs) that's more of a a Caucasian thing. You know what I mean? But I could be wrong. No disrespect to my black families. You know they would do it. Like if that's what you do, that's. However, you know. I remember the first time I wanted to make 
baked macaroni and cheese. I, yes, I don't know how to make it. Yes, Lord. Now I do, but I never knew how to make baked macaroni and cheese. Because we and were being served the craft sink, the crafts box. Yeah, the macaroni and <laughs> cheese in the box. That's what we used to eat. I mean, eat. that's cool too. That's what how you getting down, you know what I mean? But they're, they're levels. So. No, but Nigerians didn't know. Like, we don't make that. Nigerians did not oh, for like real? mac and cheese. We don't so my mom that. was always just the box. Even if I go back home, you guys know macaroni and cheese? What is what that? Is that? Yeah, oh. what is that? Right. A delicacy. That's what it is. They don't know. It's man. heaven. It's God. They don't know. I won't no, be surprised if somebody start making it <laughs> mac and in, cheese. in Nigeria. Jesus. And if it's made right, big mac and cheese. Man, come on. Stop it's playing, man. Slap. Stop playing. We should go introduce it, right? That is touching my plate. <laughs> for certain. Yeah, for real, for real. I remember when I told my friend that I never knew how to make baked macaroni and cheese. She looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, well, that's not, that's just not what we it's eat. Not we eat jello fries, yeah. fried rice, yeah. blah, blah, blah. That's what we eat. And we're yeah. not eating baked mac and cheese, yeah. baked ziti, all of that yeah. stuff. I learned that in school. Baked yeah. ziti, this is good. I'm going to learn how to make it. Right. And now I make yeah. it. That is so funny. Oh, God. I forgot. There was a thought that I had to say in regards to one of something you said. I can't fucking remember the shit. Speaking about food, baked mac and cheese. Some jello fries. Oh, so fun there. fact. In college, right? I'm a I'm like I have a lot of ideas and I put them out there but they don't last long for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. At one point in college, like I had made a flyer and everything, and it was like to start selling food on campus, like you know, for my Great house idea. and deliver it. Great idea. And it was called Mookri's Mac. That's you know hard. Mookri Mac. Mm -hmm. Mookri's Mac. <laughs> and it could have did good, but because I I loved mac and cheese so much that I started playing around with flavors. And my my roommates were always like, oh, this shit is good. This, this shit, shit is good. good. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah, I should definitely start selling this shit. Because <laughs> with my salmon, everything. Yeah. Man, oh, but it didn't, uh, it didn't, I didn't have good know. people in my ear. Yeah. So they kind of like killed the idea from actually being brought to life. It'd it was like, like you know, sometimes. when something happens, you have so many ideas, but all people, instead of people suggesting solutions, all they kept telling you is about the problems that you yeah, have. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that yeah. shit really slows your growth. It, it stunts your growth. It does. So McCree's Mac never came to light. I think I did like, I catered like one event and then never again. Hey, but shout out to you for doing that one event, though. Like, I think you deserve credit for that. <laughs> Thank you. Wolf. This is why we fuck with you. <laughs> you deserve credit for that. You have a good... We like your heart. Thank you. I like yours, too. Oh, thank you. This is our little family over here, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're going to take Wolf with us everywhere. Okay? Even Good. if he is with, you know, Horrible Decisions and WTF Media's For Life, we don't mind it. Y'all just gonna have to share him. That's the gang. No, for real. No, for real. We fuck with them. We fuck with them. Yeah, that's the they, gang. They, they definitely. The <laughs> they they influenced me getting into podcasts. That's tight. Yeah, because I didn't know about podcasts, and those were the first people that she. They were the first people she told me to go. Yeah, listen I never to. listened dope. to podcasts until Horrible Decisions. Oh really? Yeah. Yep. That's and dope. then once I found out that Weezy had the studio, I was like, Oh my god, that's that's cool. Have y'all met them? No, I no. Did you come to the um to the little mixer thing? Yeah, I didn't like yeah. actually meet her, but like I saw her though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was busy. Every time I walked by, she was there. She was talking. Of course, her. of course. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let the boss do what the boss got to do. You know? <laughs> she's really she's really nice though. So you could always if you ever seen her or ever wanted to speak to her, you totally could. She's like a you're speaking on Weezy, right? Yeah. She's really nice, Mandy too. They are so dope. They're Hilarious. man. Honestly, even listening to them, like you know, I tell you about the how to build a sex room, like. Listening to their podcast and then watching that show, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, Nigerians, they don't talk about sex like that. So yeah. I was like, ooh, I found my people. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can be free. Not a comfortable place, yeah. Right. Yeah, because I'm a veteran. I want a stripper pole in my house. So you want a what? A stripper pole in my house. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I want to take pole dancing classes. Just so. I'm telling you, them heels, them lingeries. Not the click. Not the click. click. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm into that shit. All right. I'm not going to lie, fam. I don't think you're going to be able to touch on yeah, the not pioneers. At all. <laughs> not at all. We'll save that for, for another, another episode. episode. What's, the, what's the pioneers? Um, We were going to talk about Nigeria. Nigeria. There's mm. a couple of pioneers who... Women pioneers. That's what I, what I really wanted to focus on this episode. But mm. we'll save that for the next episode. So that's We're going to start it with Make that. sure you subscribe mm. to the YouTube channel. 
Follow us on Instagram and TikTok for all updates. The Fang Podcast. Make sure you read the description because reading is fundamental, guys. It's fundamental, mm-hmm. y'all. Yeah. Right. And you can follow me at It's McCree, and that's on Instagram and TikTok. I don't really be on TikTok like that. But I'm going to try for y'all. <laughs> um, and anything regarding hair and nails, that's by underscore McCree. The one and only. Period. Any other is a counterfeit. Um, and I'm that Queen Beck. That's on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and my hair portfolio, makeup portfolio, my beauty portfolio pick. Period. I should beauty say guru. beauty because I do I do all of that shit. Um, that's my right, Bex. Mm-hmm. We got to, we got to. <laughs> yeah, got like to. if you see her hair, she did it. You see my hair, she probably did it. Like her nails, I be doing it. She be doing my everything. That's dope. We just gotta start doing each other makeup. Let me see how that goes. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> that's dope. Y'all support each other too. That's beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. So support us. Follow us if you know. You fuck with us. We'd love that. Right. And if you fuck with Wolf, we all know you do anyway. <laughs> you can follow him at Wolf Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Period. I think it's underscore Wolf Taylor. I, I think never it know. Is. I never know. It'll pop I, up though. Yeah, it's gonna be she's gonna make sure it's gonna be it. on the screen. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah. see. So it. <laughs> and it's gonna be in the description. Yeah. But yes, follow Wolf Taylor, videographer. Yeah, videographer, photographer. photographer engineer. Engineer. Not uh, the not the car shit, ladies. Not the car shits. <laughs> <laughs> the studio <laughs> studio engineer yeah podcast coming soon maybe so <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, I've actually recorded a couple episodes uh, ooh, ooh. why you keeping all these things? <laughs> why are you hiding from us like that now we, you, you know, know what we hear. When, when I get home I'm gonna send it to y'all like I'm gonna put it on Dropbox and I'll send you a link Honestly. I did it like I did. We get the the private the viewing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but we want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode with us. Uh, make sure you follow us, comment, subscribe, like. We would love to hear your thoughts. Give us a rating. How are we doing? Did you mm-hmm. like season one better? Are you feeling season two now? Like, mm-hmm. let us know where you are. Uh, I don't know what else to say, say your but thoughts in the comments. Yeah, we'll see share you your next week. In the comments, <laughs> like, share. We love y'all. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace out. Awesome, awesome. I know, right? I think identity was such a long time for I didn't know it was going to be that close. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> It'd be Not like either. that. Yeah, I think it gave me a therapy session, too. <laughs> <laughs>